hey guys welcome back to brelicious channel today i'm going to be making a simple and delicious macaroni and cheese pie so all you'll be needing for this recipe is some all-purpose flour doesn't matter if it's bleached or unbleached we have some pink salt kosher salt is best but i'm working with what i have we have some white pepper hair some fresh garlic Garlic powder is best, but I do not have garlic powder right now, so I'll be using uh, fresh garlic. We have the macaroni noodles. Honestly, any brand is okay, but I'll be using this brand today. I have butter, mozzarella cheese, and some sharp cheddar cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and grate the cheese and grate the um, garlic and then I'll come back and I'll show you guys how I put this together. So one of the most important ingredients I forgot to show in the previous clip is the milk. Everyone knows you need uh, milk for mac and cheese. Hey guys, so now that my cheese is grated, I am over to the stove. In here we have some salted water with the macaroni that's cooking right now you want to make sure when you put your macaroni in that you stir a little bit just so it doesn't uh, stick to the uh, bottom of the pan you know so right now i'm going to be making the bechamel sauce the bechamel sauce is basically just a basic white sauce to that i am going to add the cheese which will turn it into the cheese sauce so anyways, I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, first things first, you wanna put the butter in the pan. This is probably about half a stick of butter. So now that the butter is uh, basically melted, what we're gonna do is to turn this down to about medium. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the fresh garlic. Like I said, um, garlic powder would be ideal for this, but I do not have garlic powder, so fresh garlic obviously works as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my white pepper. I like to add my spices directly into the butter instead of after, because I find that it has a different uh, flavor. It's more aromatic, I guess you can say, and it just tastes better. You can actually taste the white pepper better, you know what I mean? Now that we had the white pepper and the uh, garlic, fresh garlic to this, we're not going to add any salt until the end because the cheese is salty and you do not want to over salt. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to put in some butter, I mean some flour, sorry. So. We're gonna uh, wing this a little here. A whisk would be ideal for this process, but I do not know where my whisk is. So therefore, I have to, ooh, and that's what we do not want. There we go. That's fine. We did not lose too much, so that's perfect. Some people had cold milk instead of the hot milk. I personally like to have the hot milk because I find that when you have cold milk, sometimes it tends to be lumpy and stuff like that or stuff stick to the bottom, like the flour will stick to the bottom of the pan and stuff. But this kind of just acts as a, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It just kind of brings everything off the pan the moment the hot milks hit the mixture of the roux. This is what is called in French, roux, but... Um, so it's better for me. I don't have to worry about straining and that step because it's like perfect every time. So right now we have a white roux. You do not want to go darker than this because this is a white sauce. If you're trying to make like a brown sauce or something, then you would cook this out more until it's um, darker. So I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to add in the milk. See what I mean? It bubbles and it just kind of picks up everything. That's what we want. Look at that, guys. Those little brown spots, that's the, uh, that's the garlic. 
The pasta is also al dente, so I'm gonna turn this off. Al dente means it's about 70% cooked. I'm gonna remove this off the heat a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, drain the pasta, and then we'll get back to this. Okay guys, so now for the cheese sauce, we're gonna go ahead and add in the uh, cheese. You do not wanna add the cheese in when the heat is on. So this is what it looks like now, guys, which is good. Cheese is melted. We're gonna try a little bit. So all that cheese made it uh, saltier. We're just gonna add a tiny bit more salt because once the pasta goes in there, it's gonna be a little bit diluted. So now I took the pasta, I just drained it and I'm gonna add the pasta to this. I did not rinse my pasta because I want that extra starch on it. I know some people rinse their pasta, personally I don't, because I want the sauce to be able to stick to it. So we're gonna mix that in now. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Look at that, guys. That in, make sure you guys incorporate everything super well. Look how cheesy that is. Oh. Okay, guys, so now I'm going to be finishing this off for the oven. This is the mix. I put, I put a bit of nonstick spray in here, and now I'm just going to scoop this in. I was looking for a smaller container, but I can't seem to find one. Ooh, that looks so good and it smells even better. So I'm just uh, scooping that in here. Super cheesy, super yummy, and literally not that many ingredients anyone can make this super inexpensive as well it's just so good so this is the leftover cheese from earlier so what i'm going to do is to just grate some on top another great way to add more flavor into this is to um infuse some rosemary or thyme into the actual milk probably let it boil then I uh, give it about 10 or 15 minutes or so just to uh, infuse that flavor in there. And oh my God, that would be another delicious, delicious uh, level of flavor. So I probably use all of the yellow cheddar. There we go. And ooh, look at that, guys. Oh my God. Look at that. How delicious does that look? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this into the oven for about uh, 25 minutes on 350 and for the last five minutes I'm going to do it on broil. Broil is actually going to be three to five minutes. You got to be very careful when broiling stuff because it burns in second. But I'm going to go ahead, throw this in the oven, 350. Then we'll broil it to get like a brownish texture if it's not brown enough after it's done in the oven. And then I'll show you guys what the end result look like. Woo. So this is the final product, you guys. This was uh, 30 minutes in the oven. Like I said, 25 minutes baking and five minutes on broil. And look at the result. Absolutely delicious. Just show you guys how creamy it is. Look at that. See that? Ooh. Hear that sound? That's creamy goodness right there. So, um, yeah, that's what it looks like, guys. Um, if you guys tried this recipe, please let me know in the comment section below if you have any suggestion for future recipe. Also, uh, drop it in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.